Cheeky, I'm Couch Coop, and welcome to Five More PS4 Couch Co-op Games, episode 26. Can you believe 26 Couch Co-op videos, all five games on them? Link in the description below. Full playlist is awesome. And we start with Catherine, a game that was available on the PlayStation 3 and from Atlas, and sporting some rather racy visuals. Do like the color scheme though, the pinks, very recognizable game. You've probably seen or heard of it before. I actually didn't know it was Couch Co-op till a couple of years ago and promised myself I would look at it. So it's now available and it was doing the discount on this Japanese store speciality section. So have a look, it might still be available cheaply. And we've got a Persona 5 characters. Catherine, 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 Catherine. It's a puzzler, it's a tower puzzler where you're going up a construction trying to sort of pull blocks out and get round things. It's not simple and it is quite an acquired taste. A lot of people will look at this and just go, no thank you, much rather have a gun in my hand and run around shooting zombies. Round one, ready, go! So here's the thing, attached to this puzzling gameplay within the single player campaign is actually an awesome story with loads of characters, loads of choices and loads of really cool animations between these game sections. So to hang this game just on all of this stuff is not really just, and but that's all you have access to when you play it with two people on the couch. So that's my advice. If you're a fan of Atlas, fan of that sort of game and you've got someone else who doesn't mind a quick puzzler, then you've got your money's worth here. Good luck. Both of you. But there's none of that depth that you would have seen in that single player and it's really good and that's why I've bought it is because I want to see what that single player is all about and it's just a real bonus that I've got quite a fun and quite weird two player couch co-op puzzle mode in it. I mean some of the levels are like sadist stuff, it's uh, really crazy and there's sheep everywhere and things are just not normal in the world of Catherine. I haven't actually seen any two-player sort of character development or opening of new skins or reward system within this offline local co-op mode. And this mode can be played online. That would be a nightmare. I just think people will get really good at this. I'm terrible at it. It's so difficult for me to look at this problem and work it out. Going around the edges and allowing the perspective to sort of see the problem from other angles just stumps me every time. I think it's something you get used to. And I am a bit thick. Catherine is currently available on the PlayStation Store, on PlayStation 3, and the Vita, I think. Alright, it's Overdrive, Mech City Brawl 2, the League Edition, I think that's the full title. This is a game I reviewed on episode, insert number, and it's really good. Two player, mech battling, robot game, totally out of the blue that they had a sequel quite close to the original release of it, so I jumped on this very quickly. A choice of some of the coolest robots you will ever see in a split screen mech battle PlayStation 4 game. That's not the widest of competitions, but man, they look awesome. And the game looks awesome, running so much better than its predecessor, really sporting some beautiful graphics and some quite smaller hemmed in maps. That was one of the things I did notice. On the original game, you sort of play almost outside, like forests and stuff and little villages around your feet. With this one, it's kind of scaled up a bit in regards to the differences in height that you can get to. There is a double jump and a dash and you pick up melee weapons and you might be thinking is this it? Is this all we're looking at here? Just the verses? No, there's some more stuff going on. So in the original there's a co-op mode where you actually fight kaiju like big monsters. They don't look that great but they are like cool, they're coming at you and you have to gang up on them and there'll be a boss one that charges. It offered loads of depth because I think I need more than just a versus mode like this. And I was getting in a bit of a panic because it wasn't quite obvious to me where that content was in the sequel. And because it's called League and all that, I thought, wow, this might only just be online. All the cool content might be just online multiplayer only. So a panic ensued. 
Good news is, after a bit of tweaking and buggering around, you can actually come up with a fight where you're fighting a robot that's AI controlled and you're both on the same team. So let me just confirm that. You can play in co-op against an AI controlled enemy in one of these cool arenas and it works and it's great, but there's more. I was like, okay, so goodbye kaiju then, where are they, where are the monsters? You can't have mechs without monsters. And what it does is it gives you access to a horde mode. And I was like, oh, wow. But it's just not obvious to you from the menu. So put something in the comments if you need some help with that. But this was freaking awesome. In co-op, taking all these things down, the water's electrified, whacking people with hammers. But it is only number four and it's quite expensive and if you have never seen this game before I recommend looking up its predecessor because I reckon that's a hell of a lot cheaper and it's got all the same modes in it and it's probably a really cool place to start when it comes to the series. But this is a very polished, great looking, new, split screen, almost double A game. The loyal among you will recognise that title screen. Yes, I have used this game very recently in my top local co-op shoot 'em ups or shmups video, which I will put a link into the description also. This video needs some love. There's some very cool games on here, this being one of them. Have a look to see where it featured. Got quite close to number one. Spoiler, Coop, you've just told them it's not number one. <laughs> The more I'm playing it, the more bosses I'm seeing, the more the game alters the angle of how it throws enemies at you. It does go full side scroller on some sections of levels and I just think that's absolutely amazing. Its colors and its look and its feel really are on point with what I'm looking for in a cool retro-esque two player local shoot 'em up. Its angle is all about ships and the amount of ships you've got. I also like the way the UI fades away when you're not taking hits and stuff when you don't need it. That's genius. But anyway, the R buttons expand and contract the set of ships you've got. And if you expand enough, you get that big middle bolt coming out. But you are vulnerable because you're massive. So you have to shrink down and that also decreases your damage. It's a brilliant little conundrum. It plays out very well with two people. The levels also might be tribute. My uncultured, weak weeb, knowledge knowing ass may not be spotting some of these, but I've certainly seen a few recognizable characters from retro gaming and Japanese culture, including Gundam on the previous level. And there is one that looks suspiciously like Death Stranded with like dead killer whales, but I might have this all wrong. Let me know in the comments, please, if you recognize anything. Bosses kind of steal it, as with most shoot 'em ups. They're a bit like the chorus to a song, but the verses are good. The in between gameplay with this game is incredible. The way that the bosses look and break down. This reminds me of that boat in that NES game. I can't bloody find I just Googled it. It was a red and white boat and it controlled like snake rattle and roll. Comments, please. Power ups do everything right. The difficulty is perfectly pitched. A non retro shoot 'em up fan. A fan of a fan who's not of retro of the shoot 'em ups will still like it. They'll still find some joy in here, just from the art and the sound and all those crazy lights. Shoot One Up DX currently available on the PlayStation Store. Very new. What a blinder. Okay, there's a lot to cover here. A lot has happened with me in this game. I've become unhealthily obsessed with it. I've persuaded members of my family to get hold of it. I've bought the drum over on the Switch version of the game, which we need to talk about in a second because there are differences. But this is one of the best rhythm-based J-pop and crazy music games out there. I completely adore it. And I've got all of the Ghibli extra songs on it. It's really family friendly. It's very competitive. And I find it strangely relaxing as well. Also going head to head with people online. Now, the PlayStation Store version is currently under discount on this Japanese month, but it's a different version to the Switch version. The drum is available physically on the PlayStation 4, but I haven't looked into that. And by the way, it strips off the music when you capture, so apologies, now I'll get copyrighted. 
But anyway, the Sony version, or the version that's on the Sony PlayStation Store, or the PlayStation 4, is very different with its progression system. It's really deep, and you can see the avatars and the unlocks, and the online system, and the keys to unlock new sort of title cards, and how you look, and even the little mini avatars that you get, which are excellent. Now, I had to play an AI version of Hello Kitty <laughs> to get my Hello Kitty avatar, and that thing was brutal, man. And you have to do it to the Hello Kitty song and I'm a 41 year old man it was just a weird thing to do but I loved it it was great it's so relaxing this I'm so glad I found it but I play both versions because I've got the physical drum on the switch and because I love the progression system on this one and there's different sets of songs on this one as well it's the simplest concept, only having really two buttons to work with when it comes to the pad. Well, four buttons, but two symbols to read. And it's essentially the center of the drum, which can be any A button you want, and the rim of the drum, which can be the shoulder buttons, and they can alternate. And all you'll get is one or the other or both. But it's the way that it mixes it up, it's the songs and how they sound, and it's just the adrenaline that you get when you've not made a mistake. So if you hit something out of rhythm, your points are reset. So the tension really gets high when you get to the end. I'm just showing you some of the online stuff. I really enjoy this game online also because it's just so competitive, but at the same time, it's quite relaxing. Look at the goods and okays. These points become really important when you're top level like I am. If you're getting goods, you're always getting the maximum amount of scores on that note. If you're getting okays, it's just not gonna cut the mustard. Guttingly, you can't both go online and compete with other people, but watching a game online or playing this online is really recommended for me, but just having it with the whole family of an afternoon, especially with that drum or even with a pad, it is excellent. All right, this one requires even as much explanation as well. This is from Black Forest. Now that should ring a bell because in episode 25, we looked at Destroy All Humans 2 and Black Forest have remade the original Destroy All Humans 1. So it's all going around. Now how I found this game, as per usual, is I was looking through the store and I was going to make the jump to get Streets of Rogue and I put Rogue in to the search and got to this and thought, I haven't seen this before, and looked at some screenshots, looked at some video, and I thought, hang on a minute, this is all looking extremely familiar. This game is number one on this list for a reason this week, guys, because it is absolutely brilliant. I feel I've discovered a hidden gem here. Because it's basically playing like Fury Unleashed, but it's doing some of the stuff that that game does a little bit better. Now this came out in 2016, which has blown my mind a little bit. Fury Unleashed got to number three of my top 15 couch cult games of all time. So you can understand how knocked back I was when I started playing this. This is incredible. Full 360 aiming, a beautiful dodge and jump, an upgrade system that involves a currency, really varied enemies, a map, top right that's got a rogue setup. Wow. If you can, have a focus on this sprite or your character because the detail and the exhaust coming out of their jetpack. Now I looked into this and it went under a different name for a bit in development. Diesel Storm as I think it was called and that kind of makes sense with it. You have a special that turns you into a crazy wolf thing that increases your fire rate. But anyway, I was like, this game's not gonna perform when it gets busy. Look at this. That parallax background is beautiful. The city that you're in, and it's procedurally generated, and there's random shop drops, which have different perks, different on the fly perks, like any other rogue like or like, and it has these currency random drop machines that you put the money into and get something cool out of, which you swap in and out of your special button. Some of the keen eyed among you may notice a theme with the enemies, and yeah, it is a blatant takeoff of the Warhammer Orc, with snotlings running around and big beefy orcs taking you on with assault cannons and stuff. This is crazy good. The bosses aren't re-rolled, which I kind of liked because they're quite hard and level 1's bosses are 
full on trapped in a room help it. As you well know, indie roguelikes are kind of my thing. Please see link in the description for a brand new top 15 roguelike list. And this one is going to be up there in the top five. It plays brilliantly. I'm into the one player. I'm into its color scheme. I'm into the metrics of how the currency works and the perk system. And it controls so smoothly. No slowdown, no frame rate issues. Looks stunning. It's really crazy because a lot of indie games don't look this good in 2016. I'm just baffled to why more of a fuss wasn't made about it. Absolutely blinding game. It's also quite relentlessly hard, unforgivingly hard as well. There's a lot of trial and error to get past this first boss to work out where you've got to be and what specials you really want to take on that damn ball because it's moving up and down. You need something home in and you can't be in that room that long. It's it was a great boss, and I got to level 2 boss, which I'll show, which annoyingly wasn't as epic as this one. This was more sort of trapped in a room, kill all the enemies. I didn't get to see the end cycle of it. It was quite difficult, it was on my own. I just wanted to show you guys that it's not always the same deal when it comes to the boss fights. So it's called Rogue Stormers. I can't tell you whether it's on a current discount. It was an extortioner, I do remember that much. And what a find, what a great little hidden gem. And yeah, thank you for the pat on the back there. I do, I do do my job with diligence. The Fury Unleashed developers are probably getting their lawyers ready and Streets of Rogue will have to wait. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been watching Couch Coop. More No Man's Sky content on the way, more Couch Co-op on the way. See you there.